All right, guys, something came to my attention the other day. My friend and I were buying a GPS for his big truck, his new truck, and we were going to plug it in in here and test it. Um, and I don't have any of those cigarette lighter style plugs in here. All I've, I replaced mine with the two USBs uh, and a voltmeter over there. So there's nowhere to plug one in in here. So I said, well, maybe I need to come up with a solution. And I dug into my parts bin and uh, I found these guys and I put them all in this strip that I also had. Got three there and I got here a cigarette lighter charger. So what I need to do is mount this somewhere useful, right? Let me show you what I got on my brain. Now I had a couple of ideas one of which was to put it in this tray down like this, which would work just fine. But if I ever had any spills from a drink set in here, they would go right into this, these plugs. And I didn't want that to be a thing. I also thought about mounting it back here, but my sub box is right down there. You guys can tell I have a 10 inch JL Audio sub up there. And it won't really fit there but I do have this real estate right down here and this is totally flexible and so it could be mounted right here inside there and so let's look and see I haven't done this yet yeah, there's all kinds of room back in here because it would be mounted, well, it'd be mounted right here. It might get into my tray if I mount it here because it's going to be right there. It'd be kind of close. I like that tray. So that may be out. That spot may not be the best spot. Um... So maybe we are going to go to this idea here in the uh, thing. Well, fortunately, doing it this way, this thing can come out by itself, which means I don't have to pull the whole console out. I can just pull out this part. This piece here is, uh, is laid in there. I can pull that out. Just a little bit of custom work on this, and we'd be jamming. It is not raining today, but it is rather muddy out here, so I had to move my Tahoe over to a slightly different location from the norm. But yeah, I customized this piece a while back whenever I did my subwoofer install on the console. If you guys haven't seen that video, uh, just look up the uh, SQ subwoofer console subwoofer playlist. I've got the whole playlist and all the work I've done to this to make this work. As you can see, the subwoofer is right under there. And uh, yeah, it's got tons of room. This thing plays out hardcore, man. It sounds really, really good even without any of the subs in the back turned on. The front stage by itself has got tons of bottom and it sounds like this, the bass is coming from everywhere so I'll just take my little pry tool and slip it in here and uh, pry out my little mat which is stuck down in here kind of stuck but it's not attached and yeah, a bit dusty in here but that's the uh, sacrificial lamb right there and guys, you wonder what this is. This is a floor mat that I cut up a piece out of, custom fit, to uh, fit inside my console. Cool, right? Of course, I'll have to uh, modify this to fit the new, the new thing we're doing. And I've also got to run some power up under here, which I've got some somewhere close by. So I'll pull the power wire up under there and be able to put power to these, gate, these little plugs. Let's get with that program. 
All right, after some more inspection, I've come to a couple of conclusions. One, I made this tray with a tilt to the back so that it would drain this direction if something was spilled in here. I forgot about this, but I did intentionally make it do that. So, I could turn this, this was turned this way. I can turn this around this way and it will still fit back here in the back and then just trim the front to fit. And I can mount these guys uh, the other way, obviously, you know, pointed up, but I can mount them up here toward the front. So you know what would be awesome for cutting those holes? Uh, a drill with a nice little hole saw, about an inch and a quarter, whatever that is. I don't have one of those. For those of you unacquainted, let me introduce you to the beaver. All right, we're going to start out with the, the line I know. I'm going to cut it out, and then we'll start figuring out where we need to go to get it to fit. Probably not going to be the best view, but I got to have it at the right angle for the beaver to work. That's a start. <clears throat> We're doing this via eyeball. I got that line where I know it'll work. I just gotta figure out the other lines. I wanna make a couple of marks here. to stop on the ends we'll get that knocked out so I know it's got to be about the width of this blade for the hole so that'll work out pretty good sides cut the last one we know it's the width of the blade so all I got to do is connect the dots very carefully I've got a little bit of room for error so we should be all right this line that I made that I made earlier is pretty close to being perfect as you can see that's just about the width of that blade If you guys are marveling at my beaver management skills, just know that us old men have years and years of practice in handling a misbehaving beaver.
As you can see, I can even sand and mold with my beaver. Let's see how good I did. Well, I don't know about y'all, but I would call that a win right there. So now I just need to do some cleanup work and some more trimming. And we'll be jamming. Now, it goes without saying that any time you introduce a new beaver to the household, your wife is not going to like it. So if you must bring a new beaver in, be sure you take it outside to do the business. So... Here's what we got. I got it laid in here. And this is essentially what I'm going for. And I'm deciding also whether or not I'm going to use these rubber dealers. And I probably should. Uh, and uh, I'm going to end up going in there and doing some work inside. But that's going to sit in there like so. And look pretty dang good. Look pretty stock actually. Uh, stock but cooler. So I'm going to put some screws in and uh, I'm going to put some glue underneath the screws and make this as solid as I can given the stuff I have to work with. And when I get done with that, I'm going to get all the receptacles in there and get them mounted and then create a wiring harness to pull all of them into one with a fuse. and. Uh, dump it underneath there and then run my power wire in hook it up Bob's your uncle now to the yes the less experienced uh, beaver manipulators out there just know that beavers don't really care for rubber that works pretty good so I think what I'm going to do is put a switch here and this one just have the five USBs here and a switch and uh, the big, you know, multi-purpose guy there. Uh, and I'm going to have a switch in here for letting these guys all be hot all the time. So when I plug something in, I can leave it in here charging while I run in the store and come back out. It continues to charge while the truck is turned off. That's my idea. All right, we got all the grounds and positive tied together and got her bundled up and get her done. All right, guys, I changed my mind about the uh, always on functionality. I got them on the uh, relay that turns on the amps. So, key on, fire up. Off. They're off. I ended up going with three USBs and then the one cigarette lighter power socket thing. There you go. That's the end of the jam. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Gotta clean that floorboard out. <laughs> Plenty to do now, buddy. Plenty to do now.